Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this video, we are going to talk about how to calculate one variable statistics using the TI Inspire CX2. Let's get started. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the non-cast version of the TI Inspire CX2. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start by entering a list and spreadsheet page. Okay, this is a beginner level video. So I'm going to go a little slower, right? The list and spreadsheet page is um, more or less like your Microsoft Excel. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, how to insert a row, how to uh, get elements, copy elements from one column to another column, it pretty much works the same way because you know you have the control Z for undo, uh, copy is control C. Uh, so in the same way, how you fill in columns, how you insert a column, how you insert a row, all those things will be the same. So I'm not going to go into all of that, except that when you're labeling a particular column, don't label it using any of the standard functions. Like you can't label it as mean. Okay. So, you know, the moment you enter a word and it becomes non italicized, that means normal. You can see M E A N when I was typing M E A, it was uh, still in italics. And the moment I entered N, it recognizes, the calculator recognizes that mean is a function. So you should not enter a column name that is already assigned uh, to a, one of the calculator inbuilt functions. So mean will not count come in, okay? So I'm just going to give it a very simple name. I'm just going to call it list one. And even when I say list one, can you see it's still italicized? So that's okay. So as long as you've labeled your column in such a way that even at the end of the name, it is still italicized, that means you're good to go, all right? So list one is fine. And I'm just going to enter some random numbers here, two, three, uh, seven, let's drop in a negative number and then maybe just put a two digit number, something like 11. I don't know. I just made up these numbers. Okay. So we've got a list of five, uh, different integers and just by clicking on that particular, uh, column on any of the cells on the particular column, I'm just going to go to menu, the lighthouse, all right, menu statistics and stat calculations. And we're going to say one variable statistics. Okay. This is very, very, very intuitive and very, very, very user friendly because they're all with words and that's what I find it friendly because you don't have to remember a bunch of shortcuts like F1 and after that you have to do F3 and you know, you don't have to remember all that. You just go to the menu and you're doing statistics, you're doing stat calculations and then in stat calculations, you're looking for one variable statistics. So all, all of those instructions are in words. You can just follow along and that is what is meant by user friendly, right? So number of lists, we have only one list. We've just created one list and we're doing one variable statistics on one list only. And you say, okay, and here we got to take care. Uh, you've labeled X one list. That's the first list. And uh, sometimes if you have more than one list, you need to make sure which list it is. So we just have one list this time. List one, we don't have a frequency column. It's not a frequency distribution. Uh, the results, this is important where you want the results to start from. So it's going to uh, display the results on the same uh, list and spreadsheet. And so when I say, okay, there you go. So the title is the name and it says one variable statistics. You've got all your one variable statistics. You've got X bar, which is the mean, uh, sigma X and sigma X squared, the sum of all the uh, data items. Uh, and SX is the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. Uh, this is the sigma X is the population standard deviation. Mostly with calculator options, we use SX uh, because the degree of freedom, you've got N minus one. Uh, N is the total number of uh, uh, data points that you've entered. This is uh, important because sometimes when you have raw data, I just took five uh, numbers at random. Uh, when you look at your question paper and you're trying to enter the data, sometimes in that examination frame of mind, uh, you may not have entered a certain data value. And so this is an important thing to check that, you know, whether you've entered all the 15, 20 or how many data values are given in the question paper, right? So this is a good way to check whether you entered all of them. Uh, then you've got uh, your minimum value. You've got your Q1, the uh, lower quartile. Median is also the middle quartile the upper quartile and so on and so forth. So this is how we find one variable statistics for a list of ungrouped data such as this. I'll just run through it again. So you go to menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics. Now, the reason I told you that you should be careful how you label that list, that column, list one, I'll explain very clearly. The moment you've labeled it, now it becomes one variable that is registered. Now watch what I mean by that. If I enter another uh, page, I enter a calculator page, and now when I say list one, watch, it became bold. What does that mean? That's already defined in the calculator. Okay, it's the same problem and it's a different page. Although it's a different page, 
list one that was entered here now it's become like you've already assigned something it's almost like a function that is why even on the calculator page list one is now bold for those of you who have not seen my video on problems and pages uh, i'll link that in the description below please go and take a look at it the power of dynamic link in the ti and spy cx2 so which means i can do the same calculations even on the calculator page watch so now when i'm on a calculator page like this if i go on menu statistics stat calculations the same thing one variable statistics, the same thing. So I can go there and I can recall everything that's entered there. So number of lists, okay, one list we have. X list comes from list one. Frequency, we said we're going to keep it just as one. And I say hit enter. And here you've got almost like a little table. It's all presented the same data. So you can perform the one variable statistics even on the calculator page. If you find it very difficult, uh, you know, too tedious to read through the list and spreadsheet page, uh, you can do the same thing on the calculator page because they are dynamically linked as I showed you right now. Now, let's go back to our list and spreadsheet page. We're going to enter another list and this time we'll try a frequency distribution. So I'm going to make a different kind of a list. Uh, I hope you all can see this list. All right. So I'm just going to enter 11, uh, 15 and maybe 2 and 9 and let's just say 19 and uh, those are five data points and on the next column as you probably notice i use the right arrow key to move to the column so that's just like the excel you can use the arrow keys to move uh, across columns different columns just make sure that you've labeled the list correctly okay so you can even label it like time length and all those things but be careful that they stay italicized even at the end of what you label them as all right so i'm going to come here and here i'm going to type type in free F R no frequency. Okay. I'm just see so yes, you can see it's still italicized. So that's okay. Now this is the frequency column. So I'm going to make sure uh, I'm going to give some assign some frequency here. So let's say um five students got um eleven marks and uh, uh eight students scored fifteen. This is out of twenty, all right. Uh two students, uh no, uh, two marks. This is marks, okay. So uh, perhaps maybe I should have labeled this as uh, marks. Mm, shall we change this out? Let's let it be. All right. Just imagine that these are marks now. Two points. Okay. There's one student who scored two out of 20. And uh, maybe there were three students who scored nine out of uh, 20. And there was just one particular student who scored uh, 19 out of 20. So this is like the marks, spread of marks in a test out of 20. And this is like the frequency. Now, so now if you want to calculate the one variable statistics for a frequency distribution, something like this, uh, you can go to menu, statistics, uh, stat calculations again one variable statistics again but now be careful how you are recalling the list name the column what it's coming from okay so i'm going to say number of lists is one because it's one variable uh, statistics x list all right now, x list comes from list two so that's what i meant by saying if you've got more than one list this is where you have to be caref careful about saying where what's coming from so label it correctly and use it correctly all right so our data is coming from list two frequency list this is a frequency distribution so now we are going to choose the frequency from a column that we have labeled it as FREQ and we'll say that we want the list to be uh, we want the results to be shown from column uh, E and just like that you've got your one variable statistics for this frequency distribution again you can see scroll through this and see your uh, uh, statistics you've got your um, X bar is the mean this is uh, SX is the sample standard deviation N uh, you recall we just entered five rows but it's 18 because it's the sum of all the frequencies that's the total number of data points available all right now it might be a little crowded to read here which is why uh, sometimes it is advisable that you could use the same thing on the calculator page and i'll do the same thing here uh, so if i go to statistics start calculations one variable statistics i choose one list and here again if i say i want uh, the data to come from list two and the frequency to come from a uh, frequency uh, from a column that was labeled FREQ and I just hit enter. This might be a bit more easier to read. Another thing which I want to show you, uh, if you go back to that list and spreadsheet page, uh, especially if you have a frequency distribution, you remember this thing, this was just made up marks for a test out of 20 and the students, the frequency of the students who got those marks, okay? So if you're on that particular list, if I just hit right click, and by the way, right click on your uh, handheld is control menu. So if you go right click, uh, the first few options seem very, very, very standard, but look at this thing called summary plot and watch what's going to happen when I hit summary plot. When I hit summary plot, it asks me this question, X list and, you know, it's automatically rec recognizing that we are on list two. So we say, yes, we want the data coming from list two. And yes, the summary of this data from list two, which has a frequency coming from a list called freak. And the display can be on a split page or it can be on a new page. 
Uh, it might be too crammed if you do split page, but then you can say a new page and watch what's going to happen. The calculator is going to insert a new page. Now this is a data statistics page. If you go to the home screen, this icon refers to the data statistics page. This was the list and spreadsheet page and most of the time they are, you know, I mean, when you do any kind of statistical work, the data statistics page is the page where you get all the kind of graphs associated with the data. You can even do it on the graphs page, but this is the most commonly used there. So I'm going to go to current document and by default, it gives me this a bar graph. By default, it gives me, but I can go and change those things on menu. The plot type, if I choose something like box plot, watch what's going to happen. That information, that data that I had, that frequency distribution that I had, automatically is converted into a box and biscuit plot. That obviously looks like an outlier. That's your first quartile. Uh, sorry, that's the minimum value. This is your first quartile. This is the median, uh, the upper quartile, and that should be the maximum value of that frequency distribution. So that is pretty cool. Uh, however, one more quick thing before we close. Uh, I'm going to enter one more frequency distribution, but this time, uh, what should I call this? Let me call it uh, color. Color, and let me say red, blue, green, yellow, or should I say orange? Let's say orange. Okay, and here again, I'm going to say a frequency, but this time, watch what's going to happen. If I type in FREQ, it's becoming bold. So you should be careful how you're labeling columns and bold means it's already recognizing the other column. So I'm not going to say F-R-E-Q. I'm going to say F-R-E-Q. Let's call it F-R-E-C. So, you know, for the color. All right. So maybe underscore C. All right. That's good. Now, that's frequency. Okay. So the frequency of the red color, let's say two, uh, maybe 30, uh, maybe uh, 22, and maybe seven. All right. So I just made up this kind of a frequency distribution. But this time, the data is color which is not numerical. Non-numerical data is qualitative data, all right? And this is the frequency associated with the data. But watch what is going to happen. I want to show you one more thing. If I go to summary plot and I say the X list, oh, this is X list is color. It's recognizing, but the summary is not uh, color. The summary should be coming from the frequency. We want it on a new page, altogether new page. I say, okay, and automatically it's creating this uh, bar chart. And if you're happy with the bar chart, good for you. But we can go ahead and even change that plot type to say, I want a pie chart. And then automatically a pie chart is created for me. You might say we don't even need this for our exams, but you could actually use it for some presentation, some of your projects, okay? You, after you've entered your data here and you've created your bar graph or your pie chart, whatever you think is the best way to represent, you can then take a screenshot, you know that camera option? You can take a screenshot of that and then bring it onto your Word document, on your PowerPoint document, and there you can resize this image also, and that will be a good way to use this uh, information, whether it's even this box and whisker plot. All right, so what did we learn today? We learned about how to calculate one variable statistics using the list and spreadsheet page and also using the calculator page. And we also saw how we can use this data and represent the data using the summary plot, whether it's a box and whisker plot or whether it's a pie chart. Hope this video was useful to you. I will see you all in the next video.